Hello and welcome to South of Mad Love Cooking. I'm Chef Joe and I'm gonna be your host, so let's get down to business. How about some shotgun shells? I'm talking, yeah, shotgun shells. When the dudes and dudes that come back from hunting, grab the shotgun shells, ah, AKA manicotti shells. So we're gonna take these right here, okay? What I want you to do, we're making these shotgun shells so we have some smoked pork, we're gonna put a little bit of barbecue sauce in there, some smoked gouda to smoke it up along with that pork. We got some chives and we got some big old thick cut bacon. So let's get on it. We're gonna take here, look here. Got here, we got our pork. So we're gonna grab a little bit of pork into here. Okay. Grab our smoked gouda. Yeah, a little bit of barbecue. Starting to build a little bit of mad love. We're gonna mix this up. Everybody coming home, everybody getting in the kitchen. Everybody's gonna see the shotgun shells <laughs> in the middle of the table. And guys, we're just gonna get started with some shotgun shells. So we're gonna take them. And what we wanna do is we're gonna take here, stuff a little bit in this end, stuff a little bit of that in. <laughs> so we're gonna fill this up. So as you get that full, guys, you're gonna take, now here's one of the most important parts of making a shotgun shell, and that is to cover your manicotti shell. We wanna get it covered, because think about this, the bacon is actually cooking the pasta. We're not boiling water, we're cooking the pasta with bacon fat. What else do you do in the South? So we're gonna grab a piece of bacon, go right here. You're gonna catch the corner of the manicotti, so we want the long piece here. I'm gonna go down, wrap. Very important here, use two pieces, cause why not? Always use two pieces of bacon. So catch the corner on this side. Again, guys, we're covering the shell. We need to make sure that that is covered. So let's go ahead and do a couple here and we're gonna get these in the oven. So again, we're stuffing. Stuffing, stuffing. Guys, think about how easy this is. Grab yourself a cocktail, get comfortable, turn the game on and get the shotgun shells out. That's what I'm talking about, man. Shotgun shells, everybody's happy, I'm happy, you're happy, wife's happy, life's happy. All right, get the second one in. Again, take your point. Make sure we get it covered. Grab one more, because why not? All right, guys, what do you think about that? That right there is just south of mad love. All right, we're gonna hit it with barbecue. Rub that barbecue sauce on there real good. Get it all around. We're gonna go in the oven at 400 degrees. Why 400 degrees? Because we need to render the fat on the bacon. 12 minutes, pull it out, little more barbecue sauce, and we're gonna get down to crunching on some bacon, baby. So right here, we're gonna take them, put them on a sheet pan, and we're gonna go right into the oven, guys. Right into the oven. Oh, looky here, somebody might have had some ready. <laughs> we're gonna pull that. Now, here's the love for everything good in this world. I'm gonna give you some shotgun shells. All right, guys, let's get ready. We'll get some of this barbecue off of there, clean that plate up. And we're literally, guys, you're just gonna load up some shotgun shells. We're loading shotgun shells. You're gonna hit that, you're gonna finish that, why not? Little more barbecue. Little bit of smoked gouda. We're gonna go with some chives. And guys, there you have it, some South of Mad Love shotgun shells. Guys, you, you're gonna enjoy this. Take it home, take it home, take it home. You will enjoy this. Feed it to everybody in the family, and you've been watching Just South of Mad Love.
Welcome back to South of Mad Love Cooking. Guys, have I got something for you here? A Kentucky hot bread. Oh, I've had a Kentucky bread. Well, you haven't had this one. Let's check it out. Here is what we do. We take old school recipes and we bring and shed light to them. We dial them all up and bring them back. So guys, what we're gonna do, the first thing, guys, we got a roasted chicken breast. So we, we've already got that in the oven. Salt, pepper, butter, cover it down, roast the skin. But let's get to making a Mornay sauce. A Mornay sauce is the mother sauce. It's one of the mother sauces. Let's go over here and work on a mother sauce. Okay, time for a classic Mornay sauce to go in this Kentucky hot brown. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a little bit of butter in the pan because we're gonna make a classic Southern roux. Yes, there's newfangled ways of making a thickener for a sauce, but you know what? We're gonna keep it simple, we're gonna keep it classic, and we're gonna keep it in the South. So we're gonna make a roux, guys. We're gonna do equal parts flour and butter. And what we want to do is we're going to cook the flour out of it just to give it some color. So we got the butter going in there. Just let that, we're going to kick our flame up just a hair. Be careful not to kick the flame too much. If you go ahead and that butter gets burnt, ooh, ooh, throw it away and start over. You don't want brown butter in your roux and you don't want burnt butter for sure. So let's check this out. We got that going, guys. While we have this going, let's get our, uh, but we need to melt that butter down. Our butter was a little bit colder than I thought, so we're just gonna let that settle down. But as we do that, our next step into it as we're making the Mornay sauce is actually we're just going to batter, make a little egg batter here for the bread that we're actually going to put in a salt tape pan. We're gonna just kick up our heat here a little bit, just so we get it rumbling. Oh yeah, see the roux, that butter starting to go? That's what we want. We want this classic roux to just come on, get thickened up so we can pour that milk in there, get everything going. The smells, the smell of the South. I'm telling you, as you walk into your grandmother's house, your, your mammy's house, whoever's house out in the South, I'm telling you, you get some of these smells every time you walk on. My grandma don't even have to have anything cooking. <laughs> and I come in the house and I smell stuff from last week. I smell bacon, grease, ham, hops, lard, all the things in the South. All right, guys, we're gonna let that go down. So we'll see that, we're gonna let that a little bit of that flour cook out as we got this one going. So yeah, I got a couple of pans going. If we got too much butter, hey, what the heck? Throw it in the other pan, right? So we're gonna sit here. We're just gonna egg wash these lightly. Make sure this is cooking out. Guys, the one thing, you make sure you cook out that, that flour. If you do not cook out the flour, you're gonna taste flour in your Mornay, and that's the last thing you want. So let's do it, let's keep it real, keep it watching, we got everything going. And this is the thing a lot of people say they can't do at home. Come on, keep it together. Each dish, if you prepare, if you lay out mise en place, listen to Chef Joe, <laughs> listen to me, put everything out, measure it, lay it out, set it together. When you do that, you're going to pull all the recipes together at once. I promise you, it's not nearly as hard as they tell you it is. All right, so we got that about cooked out. Now we got to be careful here. So we got the hot brew, got some cold milk. We're going to go in just a little bit at a time. The reason why we're going in a little bit of time because we're going to go ahead and break those up right now. See the thickening? Just a little more. Get our bread out. And that's about the color right there, guys, that we're going to want it. Very important to go ahead. Don't worry. Get this all whisk out take your time you do not want to clump in it it looks fine it's gonna be fine look at that so you're just gonna keep 
Get it down there in the corners. Get it down in the corners. Start whisking with your life. Start whisking. All right, now is where I got it. Let's finish it up. Take this off the heat here. That off and let's finish this up. Whew. Dog is, look at that. Was, this ain't work. This is life in the South. This is getting down in the oven. So here comes the fun part. We've got a roux going. Everything's in. Now here comes the Parmesan. Mm -mm -mm. Little sharp cheddar. Guys, 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 look at this. So as this gets whisked in, looky here. Starting to build a cheese sauce. I can feel it, I can smell it. Mm, mm, mm. So we got this going. All right, little salt. A lot of pepper. In the South, we love pepper. I don't know what it is about us people, but we love it. All right, now, this is a umami. You mommy, yo mommy, I don't know however you want to say it, but it is a mushroom and onion base, and boy, does it fortify the flavor in this cheese sauce. So I'm taking my Mornay sauce and making it Joe Mad Love sauce. About that little more salt here. So we got that going. Last thing I want to do, a little pinch of nutmeg. And then I'm gonna add my smoked Gouda. It's gonna just kick it up another notch from original hot brown. We're taking it up another notch, old school. Now we're changing it. We're bringing it into mad love school. All right, guys, there we go. So the sauce is going. We're ready. We're gonna kick this off the heat. Just remember, we're gonna kick that off the heat. And then we're gonna come back over here, as I told you, we're gonna have the the uh, chicken breast is gonna go in, but we are our turkey breast. <laughs> We're gonna take this and we already have a couple going. So we're gonna take these out. Don't try this at home. Only a chef can steal things. We have no fingerprints. So take that. Who's ready to build this thing and put it together? Now guys, this is a hot brown, but I'm elevating it up. We're taking it up another level, another notch. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to take my saute pan. We're coming back on a little bit. I'm gonna take a little country ham. They say bacon, everybody says bacon. Pork belly maybe. I'm doing country ham that we are going to saute in the pan we get a real crisp fried texture we want that fried ham just the salt and the caramelization to release out of out on it so as we do that last thing guys cast iron skillet so i make my kentucky hot brown for two right for two so you lovely little couples out there can set together and have a kentucky hot brown all right come on guys let's do it All right, let's grab our Mornay sauce. We're gonna bring that here. We're gonna grab our country ham. All right, we got some of that sauteed up. Let me look here. We got everything, we got it. Oh, need a cast iron. All right, who's ready for, put this thing together, the elevated Kentucky hot brown. Here we come. Cast iron skillet, number one. Always cast iron skillet. If you're in the south and you're not using cast iron, <laughs> shame on you. All right, ready? Bottom, right? We're gonna go. Made this Mornay sauce. It's gonna go a little bit here in the bottom. Okay. Now, So you've got that first layer right there. We're gonna take these turkey breasts and we're gonna pull the bone. I cook them with the bone in, I believe it. Definitely gives it a better flavor profile. So I take it and put it on there. I leave the skin on. 
Double check everything, and then we're just going to It just starts to make me smile. The, the, my butterflies in my stomach. When I put together stuff like this, I get a deep, deep love. Ther it's like therapy for me. It's just the things about food and what they remind you of. And this reminds me of my grandmother. It's Christmas time. It's mornings. It's the smells in the kitchen. You've got everything going on. So let's go ahead and put our sharp cheddar, smoked Gouda, Parmesan. We're going to hit it with that. Oh, that and that mixture. I'm telling you folks, we're going to bring it all together here. We're going to put a little more cheese sauce. Okay, then we're gonna slice up some Roma tomato. Some people will use beef steak, some people will use, you know, anything you like, little cherry tomatoes. I prefer the Roma because it actually holds up better when it goes back into the oven. So we've got that, we're gonna go slices of Roma tomato, okay. Then, we're going to go just a little bit of country ham. We don't want a lot of country ham because we don't want to salt it up. We leave salt uh, very, very light. I don't put salt on the tomato because you're going to have a lot of salt when it comes to the uh, country ham. It is preserved, so you're going to have that. So, all right, guys, we got that. Now, we're going to hit that with just a little bit of bacon. Yeah, it's healthy. Go ahead, yell at me, but you don't eat it every day. <laughs> this is pure Southern cooking. We're gonna go in last with a little bit of chive. Green onion chive, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna hit that right there. Gets just the last bit of cheese sauce. Let's get it in the corners. And you feel me? You feeling this? I'm feeling it, man. It's all together, all right? Last thing. We're gonna do this now, and we're gonna do this when it comes out of the oven. We're gonna add a little citrus. I, I, that just like pops on top. You got the crunch of the bacon, a little bit of citrus. We're gonna throw some heat in it at the end, and you're gonna taste one of the best elevated hot browns you have ever had in your life. We're gonna turn around, 375 in the oven. We'll be back in 20 minutes with a elevated Mad Love Kentucky Hot Brown. She's going in. It is time for the reveal. The reveal of the Kentucky Hot Brown. Yeah, right. You can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm kidding, Jack? This is just south of mad love. Let me get in it. <laughs> Guys, some of the favorite days of my life is cutting this, getting into this. All right, remember I told you a little bit of lemon? Go there, right on top. And we're just gonna have some fun here. Get ready, I told y'all. I don't play, right? I quit school because they had recess. So we're gonna get down in here and take a bite. See what we got. Get some of that tomato, some of that. So I, man, I want some of that turkey too, some of that bread, I want it all! <laughs> mm. Just south of Mad Love. Check it out and get you some. South of Mad Love, who's ready for some historical, I mean historical, some of this Mad Love translucent pie. Have you ever had translucent pie? Well, you're about to now and we're gonna kick it up a notch. So you're just gonna take a pie shell, right? You got your pie shell, we've got it going, but here's the kicker, guys. We got a stick of butter. Let's 
gonna go in the whisk. All right, we got that. Let's not play around. Yeah, we got two cups of sugar. <laughs> two cups of sugar. All right, guys, let's just get that going. We wanna get that on a slow. You're gonna go on the, that for about two minutes as I'm setting here. I'm going to take, I'm gonna whisk up these a little bit. We got a little bit of vanilla. And hit that. Check on this, see where we're at. So we're getting that good and mixed up. Let's check it out. That. We want to take and just make sure we get the sides down a little bit. Make sure we're good. All right, looking good, looking good. Translucent pie. That looks good to me. Let's go back up. Now we're going to take a cup of heavy cream. That heavy cream, we're gonna bring it right to the breaking point. So just think the back of a spoon. You would like that cream to be able to stick to it. And as it, we don't want it to break. That's where we gotta be really careful. That cream breaks, it's over. Start over, as in throw it away. All right, guys, ready? All right, so we got that. We've got our vanilla and our eggs. Now we're going with our flour. Six tablespoons of flour into your egg. You take this and you're right into your pie mix. That's gonna help set everything. Starting to thicken, we're getting it, it's coming up in the bowl. You can see where the volume went from better to here, the volume's up here. What we don't want to do is have the volume pop and go to the bottom, because then it's over. But right now, we're almost there. See what we got. Oh, uh, see these little ripples, guys? The ripples is what I need you to see. When you see these, look at that. This, guys, I only teach you this. Look at this. This is where you need that to be. If that breaks, one, if it falls, it's gone. So be really careful. Don't take your eyes off the ball. Do not take your eyes off the ball. Watch. Can't hit the ball if you take your eyes off. One last whip. Ta-da! There we go. So we're gonna take this out. We're going to get all of this in here. So once that's in, what we want to do is we're going to take a little bit, I take them out of foil. So I take out a foil, we grab that, and what we want to do, guys, just cut little strips. We want to take them out, we want to open them a little bit. What we want to do is we're going to just put this right around this edge. So for the first 30 minutes that your pie goes in, we're going to cover that just, we don't want to burn it. So that tends to overcook. Um, yes, they do make rings for this stuff, but why not do this? It's funner, cheaper. Why not? All right. So we got this. Goes in to the oven. 40 minutes, 375. Right towards the end is when we're going to pull it out and we're going to crisp it. All right, guys, we got it all wrapped. So we're going to turn around. 375. What did I say? 375. <laughs> this is where we got to be careful. Ah, oh, yeah. I'll get that better wrapped once that sets. So we're going in at 375 and we'll see you in 45. All right, guys, we just pulled out this historical translucent pie. Now, guys, I gotta tell you a little bit about this. It's in that pie crust. We have a custard going on, a southern custard with sugar, with eggs, with flour. We've mixed that all up with some heavy cream, whipped that together, and then we baked it for about 45 minutes. This thing's gotta cool for about an hour and a half, but trust me, it's worth the wait. Maybe you'll see it next time on South of Mad Love. Check out Joe Arvin. Dot com and come and see us.